Well, Barn Wedding is a is an interesting uh, film, um, you know, about friendships and all. Um, so, who came up with the original concept, and how how did it come about? Uh, well, the movie came about in a very unique way. Uh, we were, Emily and I were in a Meisner class, which is kind of an improv acting class, and her and I had come up with a scenario and played it out in class, and it ended up being this explosive scene that we kind of came up with on the spot. And then Sean and Emily approached me a couple weeks later and said, we'd really like to make a movie where that scene that we had improv was the climax of the film. So then Sean, the director, Sean Benson, Emily, and uh, myself, we came up with the general scope of the idea of the film and like the storyline. And, uh, and then I went away and wrote the script for about two months, and that's how it happened. Yeah? That's yeah. That's it? Yeah. It, we kind of we knew a couple of the actors that we wanted to work with and we didn't really know in what capacity or what kind of characters they were going to play yet so we kind of brought them into the room to do a similar situation as Kelly and I had originally done which is improv some stuff see how it feels see the relationships that were naturally blooming and write within those worlds um, which was kind of a cool process as an actor to be a part of and to see that kind of blossom. So during the production, which, um, since it's a movie about kind of friendship and all, all this kind of stuff, um, did you guys uh, develop those type of relationships during the production also? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we did. I mean, I really didn't know Kelly at all until we, we started rolling, and it didn't take long before we were, you know, thick as thieves, yeah, cooking in the kitchen and cleaning. And, yeah, and it was really a whole, a, a really communal, um, at, you know, activity the whole thing we were 10 days all together in this little cabin and uh, really tight quarters people sleeping on couches sleeping on you know sharing beds and yeah everybody bonded really 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 quickly and uh, which I think probably went you know was translated well into the film yeah, yeah. yeah. like we were in set it was such high stakes in terms of the weather being minus 40 degrees Celsius and us having 16 hour days and all of us like I was doing edits and producing and catering and Emily's producing and Sean's directing and also producing and Emily also did the costumes and like the set deck for it but I would say even with those high stakes we had so much fun there was no conflict no one was it was just we were all having the time of our lives. Like it was a very magical experience, and like camp. it was like camp. Yeah, was and camp. and when I watch the movie, I see so much of that joy and the the spark that was kind of building between us as a family living in this giant, ridiculous house. <laughs> that um, it was like that, yeah. Now you could have just wrote the uh, the, the the setting to be not in Canada or not in the winter <laughs> particularly. I mean, why, why did you want to push yourself uh, t towards this? I understand it's a shotgun wedding, but you know, you could have easily set it into a different era environment. Well, we learned that the hard way. <laughs> we, yeah, um, it was because I think it was December that we decided we want to make the movie. We pre-produced for um, January, February, and we wanted to be shooting by March, which happens to be the dead of winter. So it was more of like a, we want to be, we, we wanted to make a feature, and I think with independent cinema, um, you, you only have, you, you can't pre-produce for such a long period of time because you're asking people to work for free. So we knew we wanted to make the movie by the end of the winter, and that, that was why. I don't know if, yeah. I think a part of the story was also that the characters feel confined mm -hmm. within their environment and as Canadians we definitely know what that feels like to be stuck in Toronto for a winter is really hard uh, and people in northern Ontario are like you think you have it hard um, everyone's just cold and isolated so I think it adds like its own kind of element to the to the film it's its own character in a way yeah. um, and it's something that was it's obviously really personal to us as we grew up in Canada and it's something we wanted to share it's like I think something that you don't see very often too so um, it, it proved to be kind of its own character so who's, whose place was that? The uh, the the B and B and the barn and everything. The um, the the Toronto interiors were were in Toronto, and then our our barn and our barn house was the director's parents' house, 
which is uh, this big, beautiful Victorian home, and they have their personality written all over it, so it's very fun and kitschy inside, so we kind of worked with that environment. And we didn't have the barn when we started shooting, <laughs> which is like kind of the metaphor for the whole film. It just magically fell into place the way it should, but we were looking for the barn. Who wants to tell this story? I'll tell story. Yeah. Well, I don't really believe in people saying no to me very much. So Sean was like, Kelly, because my job was to find the barn, but I was also doing a lot of other things, and I kind of dropped the ball on the whole, like, find the barn thing. <laughs> because I was just like, because I was like, it's going to happen. Don't worry, we'll go there. And I was, I was like, this is my second independent film, and I kind of had thought, like, we'll go there, and then we'll knock on doors. Because that's, like, like the, the currency of, of people and, and just asking favors is really how you make an independent film. So we were four days, four days in the shooting, and I sent off, Suzette McCanny, our production manager, and our Julian um, Peter, Julian Peter <laughs> our um, uh, other camera operator, and I was like, "Go drive around. Like you're in. We're in the we're in the farmland of of Ontario. There's a barn. There's just barns. There's just one barn. Whatever. I'm like, go up to someone's door and be like, "Hey, do you want to be in show business? <laughs> and because uh, you can sell a lot by like, yo, would you like to be a part of the magic of show business? <laughs> and uh, so they they did this a number of times. I was like, set, put a bit, put a bit of makeup on, you know, spruce yourself up, go outside, whatever, you know. So they did that, and uh, I thought Suzette was going to be the one who was going to find the barn. But then Julian was like, went up to a barn. I don't know this part of the story. He yeah, he he knew this girl from high school, and he was like, she they used to live with these people in a barn, and so they just drove up and randomly knocked on the door, and it happened to be the nicest people ever who fully offered us their barn, their house for warmth, and actually did a did a little cameo appearance. So yeah, it was, it was I don't know, Magic. we're lucky. <laughs> well, it's, it seems like it's a, it's a great place and, and so on. I mean, I own a barn myself, but it's falling apart. <laughs> but uh, so um, with, with, with the barn, the barn wedding is, is in the title, but in reality, the whole movie wasn't really about a wedding or barn. It's all about relationships, yeah. right? Could you talk more about that? That's what. That's the focus. Uh, yeah, the barn wedding was our working title for a long time because we were just like, it's the movie. It's happening in a barn. Um, but we ended up realizing that it kind of uh, symbolizes the lead characters played by Emily, Emma's um, idea about what she want her wants her life to look like as opposed to what she wants, what her life actually looks like. And I was playing with some of the themes of um, people being wanting to have their memories posted everywhere and kind of make these perfect memories as opposed to really feel through them in, in, in present time. And so it's about relationships, it's about um, these people interacting with each other. Um, in this day and age, people who, like friends, brothers, estranged brothers, friends who have been traveling, coming together, living in a barn and not having their phones, not having electricity, not having warmth. It's like, it's like what, are, what do we talk about these days when we're alone and we don't have the opportunity to pick up our phone? So it is about relationships. And Barn Wedding, the title is kind of my cynical nod, I guess, to a trend of um, people wanting their wedding to look like something as opposed to feel like something. And it's about young people maybe getting m married too young and too early and people not being able to see each other when they're ch when they're clearly changing in front of their eyes which is what i think pri i primarily i think the movie is about people changing in plain view in front of each other and knowing be no one being able to tell that that's happening right. i think i think i'm landing on that one <laughs> so what do people end up talking about uh, with no cell phones no nothing and all that kind of stuff well, it's it's awkward. <laughs> There's um, and you know in the con, the, a lot of the dialogue in the film is, um, you know, it's interesting because they're sort of talking about kind of surfacey things like where they're working, where they're living, sort of that kind of stuff. And there's all this underlying uh, tension between these people that have relationships that are kind of maybe strained, and they're just sort of trying to be congenial, uh, but underneath there's percolating all this yeah. kind of angst and. Um, you know, all, all sorts of things, so... Um, what do you guys talk about in the, on the couch scene? You have not many conversations. Yeah, yeah, there's like a whole range of topics come <laughs> up from like fictitious, you know, uh, royal <laughs> serpents and, you know, anal sex and, uh, yeah, and, masturbation. yeah, masturbation and 
Uh, but that's, you know, there's like alcohol involved in that conversation. Uh, <laughs> Lots of easy topics. Yeah, and you know, and I think actually one of the, the most interesting relationships is, is between the girls and sort of what they talk about and how, you know, what they want for their lives and um, just exploring that relationship. Yeah. Talk to me about the uh, the certain gay themes um, th that's uh, that's in the, in the movie. I mean, it, it's uh, I mean it's not the primary focus, but it, it is in the in the movie, and um, it was well done. Yeah, we never really we never discussed it being a theme or something that we were focusing on. So it's been kind of interesting that people have have been focusing on that a lot in in the press um, because two of our lead characters are gay uh, and we're dealing with some like curiosities and some uh, you know exploration in our characters and I think it's not so much about um, focusing on that it's it's that everyone there's a lot of chance for humans to want to explore and love and change and sometimes if you feel stuck in something you can you can want to act out and and explore your options because it's hard to be in your 20s and you feel like you need to start figuring things out and who are you and what do you like and what do you love and mm -hmm. what do you want your life to look like it's a lot of pressure so I think these characters are all just trying to figure figure themselves out. Mm -hmm. um, do, do you want to touch on that? Cause yeah. you I mean, and it actually may be a bit of a misnomer to even to call them in a way gay themes because yeah. they're not, the characters aren't, well, one of them, you know, self-identifies as gay and that's clear, but other ones are sort of working through their sexuality and trying to, uh, you know, discover what it is and being surprised by what they discover. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Human yeah, I mean, it's again, it's it's more about relationships than it is about specifically, you know, um, gay gay themes yeah. or gay love or romance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, for me, as a writer, it was important for me to reflect a group of people that resembled the people that I know and my friends. And I think that there's lots of story come out stories about people coming out as gay or lesbian, and 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 a lot of my friends have experimented quite a bit and that doesn't necessarily like there's a bit of a gray area like whether or not that means are they gay are they bisexual are they are they lesbian it's like it's really just about what they're going through and in it not being this really intense Label. labeled thing and it just being oh like like so and so's dating a chick now and or so and so's dating a guy and like it not being yeah. a thing and and we come you know in, in Toronto Toronto's a very liberal um open artistic community and our friends are very relaxed about this kind of stuff and so I'm interested to see how our film translates in, in other in other countries in other places where things are a lot more defined because for my group of friends it's really not that it's not that big a deal I didn't even notice it, it didn't, I don't even yeah. notice it and like I, I don't know if it's whether or not these characters are gay or not gay as you said whether or not they're self-identifying it's about the changes that they're that they're going through and whether or not the people that love them are willing to let them go through that seamlessly or not I think we answered that question yeah, yeah. Don't worry. I didn't really notice it either. I, you know, I just, I just basically watched it all the way through. Um, but I, what I did notice was the challenges. Uh, look, look, looks like it was a tough uh, filming production, especially you have to act uh, through uh, certain things like wearing coats indoors, and and so on. Um, could you could you guys talk about if there were any major difficulties during the production? Well, like we said, it was, it was, uh, obviously we're faced with lots of challenges every day, you know, basic filmmaking challenges, but they all kind of magically healed themselves. I think, I mean, the weather is a big thing. A lot of um, us were outside in minus 40. We had one particular scene that we were not wearing coats outside continuity wise so we realized that we had to be outside and filming in negative 40 so it was kind of a time crunch in that case because you can't leave your actors outside for very long doing that sort of thing so it's kind of an in and out situation um what other challenges do we have i i mean i mean the t the the our shooting schedule was insane it, 10 days is not very long to shoot a 
to shoot a feature. And so it was kind of morning tonight. Everyone had to keep going and keep encouraging each other. And we all just worked together. She w was in the kitchen cooking for us before her scenes. And he was cleaning up and playing piano and singing for us. And it was very, yeah. like, <laughs> it was a very we fun place. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Also, I would say, even in the post-production process, like, I... I always feel bad as a producer because people always want to know what the horror stories are. You know, what, what went wrong? What actor dropped out? What footage did you lose? What person, like, did something? And honestly, like, oh, I feel so bad, but it was kind of like a dream. We just did it. And then even in the post-production process, um, people, saw, yeah, people, people, Kat Weber and um, Marco Pisano saw the film, or Kat was involved. Kat Weber did our what is it post called producing. Po post producing, but on set she did the everything. Everything she like transferred all the, she like slept for twenty minute intervals every night to transfer the, to dump the footage so we could shoot again on those cards. Um, but you know they saw them. Everyone who was involved in the post production process saw the film, saw the footage, and were like, I want to be a part of this. And so it was ev everyone was kind of at the right point of their career to want this project to be, uh, you know, to propel us forward in some sort of way. I don't like I can't think yeah. of any kind of catastrophes besides like the minus 40 weather which was all but also brought us together so much like we rented an RV so for the scene where there's an RV in the movie we rented that RV and we all drove it to this barn and then we all we all sl we all were like that the RV was also the the place where we were sleeping inside and like <laughs> cuddling so we're all in this RV just freezing while they're shooting the outside of the RV while we're in it <laughs> so I don't know but yeah well, I'm glad it was the movie wasn't uh, RV wedding or something like. <laughs> um, could you uh, folks uh, talk about uh, your upcoming projects? Oh. Um, well, as an actor, I just finished shooting on Ricky Gervais's new movie, Special Correspondence, which was great. Um, I have a television show that I produced called The Nadeaus of Duquesne Island, which I'm also in, which is coming out. Uh, my third feature, Sugar Daddy, we're shooting in the fall. And I have a war movie that I'm finishing with, um, I can't actually say who, but, <laughs> but there's a lot going on. She's always so busy, <laughs> jeez. <laughs> um, yeah, I just finished shooting a show called The Girlfriend Experience, um, which is Steven Soderbergh's new series that's shooting in Toronto. Um, so I got to do that for the last little bit, and that was lovely. And uh, I'm also in development for a couple projects, uh, a web series, and a short film. So kind of focusing on the creation. Oh, yes. And I have, um, I'm in, thank you. <laughs> um, I'm in Crimson Peak, which is Guillermo del Toro's next feature. And that's coming out in October of this year. So I'm really excited to see it. I haven't seen much of it. So yeah, I mean, exciting things. Um, so I'm an independent theater producer in Toronto, so I have a company called Witch Boy Theater, and uh, we have another show coming up probably in the fall, um, and um, I'm actually appearing in uh, a mini-series, which is airing tonight and tomorrow, called The Secret Life of Marilyn Monroe. I'm in it for a hot second with Susan Sarandon, <laughs> so uh, that's coming, and um, yeah, that's about it. Now, one, one last question that I just have, um, just out of curiosity, what do you think would be the perfect setting for a wedding if you, if you had to marry or if you were already married? <laughs> uh, a backyard. The best weddings I've ever been to have been the most low-key weddings, like in your backyard, I don't know, your parents' house, just some simple, beautiful place you can get all your friends together and have a good time, and that's... You know, that's to me. That's that's. I love weddings, hands down. But those are my, yeah. those are my favorite ones. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Somewhere chill, bonfires. Like, I want like, uh, like taco trucks. I like, you just took both my things. Did I? Taco trucks. <laughs> I want some cool food trucks. So I think backyard. You can make it. You can personalize it. Mm. I don't know though. We'll see. I'm never getting married. Um, I'm just joking. Um, actually, it might be true. Who knows? Uh, I would do a backyard or with taco trucks as well. Maybe like if Let's there was. <laughs> yeah, so all of us are getting married. Um, something low key uh, or just do the whole like Montreal thing and like have kids and just be like baby mamas and husband mamas for a bit. <laughs> Montreal. <laughs> That's, Montreal is like the, the highest like unmarried coupled capital of North America. Oh, there you go. Right. You know, yeah. who knows? Something alternative with tacos. <laughs>
As an American, I did not know that, but thank you. <laughs> hey, appreciate it, and um, thank you uh, for uh, speaking with me, and good luck um, with the film. Thank you.